Hi, this is Team 18225 High Definition, and today we're going to go over how to build a counterbalanced arm. First, let's go over this design, which is pretty straightforward. We've got U-channels for supports, collars and 6mm D-shafts, and a 25 tooth to 6mm coupler that attaches the servo to the actual arm. We've also got a chain with a 32 tooth sprocket to 16 tooth sprocket, and this doubles the torque of the servo, although it also halves the arm's speed and freedom of motion, but that doesn't matter too much here since the arm isn't moving that much, and you also don't want to move too fast or else you might throw off your accuracy. Also, the fact that the servo indirectly moves the load means that it is much harder to break the servo. We decided to use a chain rather than a belt here because you can change the length of a chain and they also don't slip compared to belts. However, assembling a chain is very annoying compared to a belt, which you might want to keep in mind while you are building your own arm. To find the total number of chain links, you substitute the variables in the equation on screen with actual values. Putting the values for this arm here into the equation gets you 69.7, and since you can't have a fraction of a chain link, you have to use 70 chain links, which is why there is some slack. For the servo, we chose a 2000 series dual mode torque servo from Go Builder. Because the expansion hub only gives 5 volts to the servo, and we're not using a servo power module, the RPM of the servo is 40, and then you need to additionally have that due to the 2 to 1 sprocket ratio, giving you 20 RPM. On the other side, the sprocket ratio will also double the torque of the servo, which is more important here than RPM. Even though the servo will lock up even if it is powered off, the counterweight here helps reduce stress on the servo, making it less likely to break, and it also greatly increases the load the servo can carry. As for the calculations of the counterweight, the left side of the arm weighs 115 grams, while the weight of the arm on the right side is 40 grams, and this gets you a net weight of 75 grams for the left side. It just so happens that the counterbalance applies around that much force, meaning that it is perfectly balanced when you string it. Now, we've put 13 coins into the box, and each coin weighs 5.7 grams, giving a total weight of 75 grams. We've also strung the pulley once, doubling the force the counterbalance applies, which will cancel out the weight of the coins, meaning that the arm is still balanced. Note that we've disconnected the servo from the arm, so that it isn't helping to carry any weight at all. We've now put another 13 coins and strung the pulley one more time, so that the arm is once again still balanced. We've also now attached the servo to the arm, and as you can see, the servo still easily moves the arm. However, note that stringing the pulley multiple times will increase the friction, which is why the movement here is a bit choppy. Well, that's pretty much it for the video, and we hope you will have learned something from this.